Hi guys, I'm Harry from Tier 1. I run the American uh, website and some of you will already know me if you're subscribed to the newsletter. You'll see uh, them coming out for me. I'm um, here in Kyrgyzstan. This is my first extreme hunting experience and uh, I thought for the first one we might as well go for the most extreme animal uh, which is the, the ibex. So we set out on horseback um, uh, to climb up to where the ibex uh, live and graze, which is up at about 14,000 feet altitude. The air is very thin up there and you can really, you really notice it as you start climbing. Your face starts to tingle, uh, you lose, you know, your hands start to tingle, it starts to get very, very hard just to put one foot in front of the other. Um, we got off the horses at the bottom of a glacier and then had to trek up that to where the, the laying up point was, uh, where we were, we were gonna wait for the Ibex to come through. And that was the most arduous climb I've ever done. There's no, no air, and we had to stop about every 20 paces, but just that in itself, walking up a glacier was an incredible experience. Um, the guides led us, uh, we split into two, two groups, and we had a couple of over, overlooking um, firing points, and we didn't know which way the ibex were going to come through this the sort of a valley formed by the glacier. They could have come towards us, towards the other group, or straight through the middle. And we laid up, and uh, where we sat, the guide uh, sort of gave us some instruction on where to where to lay up and aim. And uh, we did it all without thinking. And when I about 15 minutes into it, I sat up and looked over and realised just over to my left was a sheer drop of about 3,000 foot, just straight down. And we're, uh, I didn't even notice it going up, but it gives you an idea of just how treacherous um, this type of hunt can be. You, you, there's, there's no safety rope, you're right there. Um, so we laid up, we thought they might be coming through quite soon, but in the end it took an hour and a half and we got extremely cold uh, laying up there. So we were shivering, trying to, trying to stay warm and wait for them. And then, almost without warning, a huge ibex appeared. The head of the herd um, appeared in our scope just over the ridge line where we were aiming. Uh, this big red thing with enormous horns. And uh, there's a moment where you look in its eyes and you sort of freeze. And it, it's incredible. It's an unbelievable experience. Um, and it came forward. My uh, mate who was here with me um, had already been told by the guide to take the first one. So he had that shot, I had to wait for the next one. So he took the shot um, with the Christensen Arms uh, 6.5 Creedmoor and he put one into it, uh, it turned around, he put another into it and it got over the ridge, but it, it died just, just shortly over the ridge. So it did the job. Um, at that point, I thought probably we'd missed our chance. Maybe the herd was, was, was spooked and was gonna go the other way. Um, so we, uh, the guide led me down, you know, we just scurried down the rock face to a, to a lower vantage point where we, we got a bit more of a view of the valley. They didn't come through. Um, and then we saw them appear on this huge, I don't know, tusk shaped rock um, where they'd obviously decided they would be safe. And I had a, a, a close up, an incredible close up that I think a nature documentary would have been proud of, of, uh, six ibex fully mature with enormous uh, horns standing on the rock and peering down at us and us looking up at them and we, we couldn't take the shot because they'd have fallen down that that two three thousand foot drop and the, the trophy would have been irretrievable so we just had to look and they eyeballed us and we waited and it felt like an age um, uh, and then the guide fired a few shots trying to get them to move down and it uh it all started to blur a bit, the adrenaline was pumping, you know. So we thought, again, probably the, the, the chance is gone, we have to wait for another opportunity. So I came back up to the original firing point, set the rifle up, pointing across the valley, um, knelt down, chatted with the other guys, and then out of nowhere, the entire herd of 20 or 30 ibex burst over the ridgeline across that valley where we'd just been aiming and I wasn't behind the rifle. So the lesson learned, stay behind the scope because you never know when the opportunity's coming. Um, 
the, the, the front runners were the biggest, but they got past me. I managed to get a bead on one in the middle of the, of the herd, took the first shot. Um, I couldn't see where it hit and, the, and the, the herd kept running straight up this, the, the top of the glacier. If they got over the top, they were gone. We'd never see them again. So this was the only chance that, that I would have. And luckily, I saw one start to limp um, where I'd hit it and, uh, and it, was, it was clearly struggling. So I knew I had an opportunity. I chambered another round, fired at it, chambered another round, fired at it. I took this Hardy, a 300 PRC. So a really nice big caliber rifle. And the third shot put it down. Um, it's a beautiful lightweight rifle. I'd definitely recommend it. Carbon fiber stock. Um, tier one tactical bipod here as well, which performed very well. Um, all of the gear was just fantastic. And there was a, just an incredible moment of elation when the, the herd had gone, the chance was gone. Um, but me and my, my mate had both bagged an Ibex. They were both down. And uh, yeah, it was a successful hunt. And all that, all that work, all that trekking and all that pain and cold was just forgotten in an instant. It was just the, this incredible feeling of, uh, yeah, of having achieved a goal. Um, I'll never forget it my, in my whole life. It, it was amazing. Um, the guides were fantastic. Um, we definitely couldn't have done it without them. I couldn't have got up there without them. Um, they knew exactly where to go and where to put us. And I'm eternally grateful to them for that because uh, it was the experience of a lifetime. So yeah, highly recommend it to anybody. Um, if you want the, the ultimate hunting experience, get out and shoot an Ibex in Kyrgyzstan. There's nothing like it. Um, grab some tier one gear to do it. It performed incredibly well. I mean, I would say that, but it did. It was rock solid. Um, and in that moment, you realize you really only have one chance. Um, I got three shots, you might just get one. If your gear lets you down, all that work, all that money is for nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm grateful to the gear, grateful to the guides and everyone who made it possible.